Looking to get a better night's sleep? Well, it could have a lot to do with what you're putting into your body. Kelly O'Brien joins us now. She's a board certified health and wellness coach at Proper. Good morning. Good morning. You are a sleep coach. Tell us a bit about what you do. What, what is the role of a sleep coach? Sure. So all of the sleep coaches at Proper are national board certified health and wellness coaches with additional training in um, a PhD developed sleep program. So we have a lot of knowledge around health in general and then specifically how our sleep relates to that. And then we come up alongside each individual client, help them sort through what their concerns are about their sleep. We help them um, assess what their individual sleep needs are. And then they're in the driver's seat in terms of what needs to change or what support they need. We come up alongside and provide some resources, but really are kind of guiding them as they put together a plan to help move their sleep in the right direction. How would we know if we need to seek the help of a sleep coach? You know, what are, what are some red flags to be aware of? Because I'm sure, listen, not everyone has a perfect night's sleep day in and day out. How do we know when to get in touch with someone like you? Yeah, I think if the if the sleep disruption or disturbance is is kind of ongoing and is really starting to impact other areas of your life, that might be a sign that you want to look into some potential intervention. And of course, you know, you can easily Google all sorts of tips for optimizing sleep, but it doesn't really help you customize it to your lifestyle. Everybody brings something different to the picture in terms of some non-negotiables around their sleep, you know, kids, jobs, uh, being a caretaker. So how do we include those into the set of circumstances and still put together a plan that helps you optimize your sleep. Because like you said, it is so individualized, but a lot of times it could be what we're putting into our bodies. And I know we've heard, you know, oh, I drank coffee too late in the day, or I had some chocolate ice cream before bed. I'm sure those are, are, are two that will affect our sleep. What are some other foods that might be having a, a negative impact on our shut eye? Yeah, so certainly um, things that would impact our health negatively in general. So, you know, highly processed foods, highly processed carb foods, um, high sugar foods, super spicy or acidic foods, greasy foods, all of those things that we know impact our health in general certainly have impact on our sleep because it just makes moving into that more restful state that we want to be in before sleep takes hold, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, and the body is really in this more activated state as it's trying to figure out what to do with these foods that really aren't optimal. So they can get in the way. Um, and of course, we know, you know, like caffeine, alcohol can also impair our sleep as well. And oftentimes it's thought of like, oh yeah, it, it helps me fall asleep. But what we don't recognize is that it's really impacting the quality of our sleep in terms of the ability to move through those sleep cycles very effectively. So, um, you know, it messes around with our blood sugar levels, certainly makes us have to get up and use the bathroom more, which can impact our sleep quality. So we want about a three to four hour buffer between any alcohol consumption and sleep and about a six to eight hour buffer between any caffeine consumption and sleep. Good to know. All right. So we talked about some of the negative things. Do you have any tips for maybe a, a food or drink or two that will actually help us get better sleep? I, I know we've, we've all, all heard that, you know, oh, a glass of warm milk and you're going to relax and go to bed. Is there any truth to that? Well, there is, yeah, there are some studies that show that, you know, a small amount of high quality dairy product before bed can, it includes some micronutrients that can really support those, um, those natural chemicals in our body that are supportive of sleep. So yeah, of course, you know, if you've got issues with dairy, that's probably not where we want to go, but there are other things. So things like nuts and seeds can be supportive of our sleep, um, bananas, kiwi fruit, um, you know, those types of things can really help, you know, not in large quantities, but in enough where we know that it's not detrimental and again, can encourage some of the natural systems and cycles around sleep to come on board. I think another important thing to keep in, in mind about food consumption and sleep is we want, again, about a three hour buffer between our final meal, no matter how high quality it is, and our sleep. Um, so that we get that big bit of digestion kind of out of the way and again, help encourage in uh, moving into this more restful state. All great tips, Kelly. Thank you so much. And hey, if we need to seek your help, you know, take it to the next level. We're going to put some links up to proper on our website, roadshow.com. Thanks for joining us. Sure thing. My pleasure.